Okay, good Sunday morning, everybody. Welcome to Sunday School. Well, a very, very, very warm welcome to you on a very, very cold day out there. How about that? It's very cold out. It's the coldest I've felt for quite some time here in Topeka. And good morning. Welcome. Y'all are tuning in here. We'll give it just a minute here as we get started. And again, this is Reverend Phil Anderson here of Oakland United Methodist Church and Kansas Avenue United Methodist Church up here in the pastor study. Got it finally toasty and warm up here. It took a while. You can imagine coming up into a building at about 6.30 this morning and how cold it was. Hi, Kathy. Welcome. Polly, you too. And Ed as well. And Kathy. So, Karen, welcome. I see a lot of folks joining in today. Well, at any rate, if you've been outside, you know it's a very cold day, so I hope you stay warm and uh, have a good Sunday. We are, again, now on February 7th of 2021. Hard to believe now. We are almost in the first full week, almost done now, of February. My daughter's birthday, so Brittany, happy birthday if you're watching. and We're and glad you're having, a, hopefully, a good birthday today. Talked to her yesterday a little bit. She seemed like she was doing well, and we had her little girls over at our house for a while, so it was a lot of fun. Good morning, Rose. Welcome. So so glad to see you as well. And so, uh, again, uh, we're, we're just going to share a little bit this morning. We've got a really good, uh, I think, a good uh, topic. I hope the message is good, but the topic is really good for our sermon at 1030 this morning. Make sure I get that right. 1030. And the name of the sermon is going to be How to Become All Things to All People. That's a great uh verse from, uh, I believe, 1 Corinthians we'll be looking at this morning, so you want to make sure you're back for that. But as we start today, let's just have a word of prayer, shall we? And Lord, we do thank you for bringing us together here online this morning. It's cold outside, Lord, but yet, Lord, with you, we have the warmth of the Holy Spirit in us. Lord, it's uh, so good to have you in our lives. We just thank you for being present with us. Now, Lord, I ask you to bless those that are watching. Give us a good uh, time here today as we fellowship together, even here online. Yes, this in Jesus' name, Amen. Well, I don't know about you. I'm not. Uh, I'm not really looking forward to this cold snap. But y'all been hearing about this cold snap? It looks like we're going to be under 32 degrees for what about 10 days or so. And so I don't know. I'm gonna. I'm gonna wait and see. Hopefully that's going to change at some point. But definitely it's going to be a cold few days here. So in the meantime, just take care if you're out and about. Do be, have precautions and. Uh, you know, uh, don't get yourself out and get too cold, hopefully. Hopefully that'll be the case with all of us. Well, you know, last week we were just talking about some ways to share our faith, and that's kind of what we're going to be talking about today, really. And I think for a lot of us, that's always a challenge. You know, well, how do we share our faith, especially in today's climate, you know, where if you have your Bible at your desk at work, that might even get you in hot water in some circles, you know. And, you know, years ago, you know, we wouldn't necessarily be preaching on our job, but we might be a little more free to talk a little bit about our faith. And I believe as the Holy Spirit gives us direction, no matter what type of um, circumstance we find ourselves in, God will give us the right words to say, you know, obviously we've got to, we've got to um, abide by the rules that are set forth in many regards in terms of how we're um, communicating the gospel and yet we also have opportunities all around us all the time and the holy spirit is one that makes the doors open for us right we don't open them we don't barge through a closed door but if if the door is open we need to go through it and i believe god will give us the right words to say when those times come so a few thoughts today along that line and, and i think really the first one is the idea that we um as as we as we kind of just navigate through life, you know, I think that's the biggest challenge. And and frankly, you know, I look around and see all the church. And this is of course before COVID, but but a lot of the churches in Topeka, and I'm sure are all over the place, have seen their numbers go down, the numbers of people attending. And so you know, we, the question that needs to be asked: What happened? Why 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 did the numbers start dropping off? And there've been books. I mean, I've got books back here behind me that talk about all this. Uh, one of the uh, books I really have enjoyed reading. I've kind of put it on hold for now, but it was called Comeback Churches. And and it was done after interviews were made with, uh, I believe, like 250 different churches. And a lot of work went into that book. But, you know, really, um, I think somewhere along the line, we, we, we got off track. We as the church, the larger church of Jesus Christ, 
And so that now we're kind of finding ourselves like we, we got to do something. You know, we, we, and both these churches here, Oakland and Kansas Avenue, we, we both desperately need younger people to come into these churches. I think we would all agree with that. And now the question is, how do we get them? Because now the infrastructure is really not there and we don't have programs. So if young people come into our churches, families come in and they don't see anything for their kids, they're probably going to leave and not come back. Honestly, that's sort of the dilemma that we find ourselves in. So I actually just this morning here, I spent quite a bit of time going over um, some thoughts that I hope I can share maybe even next week in a special program, you know, maybe online, and, and it'll have to be online, of course, but uh, maybe on a Facebook live, just on what I'm seeing and what I think we need to be doing as a church, and maybe uh, some specific ideas that we can do. And, and, and yet, you know, through it all, the churches are still active, they're still vibrant. I mean, even though the numbers are down, we still have committed people, we have people who love the Lord, who want to see people reached for the Lord. They want to see our neighborhoods and our communities reached for the Lord. The question is, how do we do it? And so I think that's now the, the step that we, we kind of find ourselves in. I think we would all agree that we would like to see the churches expand out and to, uh, to be more of a vital role in our communities. Churches can be seen in a lot of different ways by people who aren't churched, right? If you look at how People can just walk right by a building here in Oakland. You know, this, there's a lot of foot traffic here in front of this building. In the same way at Kansas Avenue, a lot of foot traffic back and forth. But what do the churches really mean to these people? What, what can we do to reach out to them? And about a year, well, it was in October of 2019, I remember uh, I was thinking, let's go ahead and do something a little bit unusual here. And we, and we tried it. Unfortunately, it was a very cold day. And actually, a day that I didn't realize at the time, there was no school so the school kids were out but ralph and i uh, over here we went ahead and started up a uh, a uh, little barbecue out in the park and we were just handing out free hot dogs to people and we engaged a lot of people in conversation and i think you know we prayed with a few people so that was a starting point and and, and yet never got to really finish it and unfortunately that day like i said there was no school so so the foot traffic was way down and the number of people coming by was way down because it was really cold. It was like 40 degrees and we were out there doing a barbecue in the parking lot. Cold, gray, October afternoon. But it, it showed us what was there. It showed us that we could do it. So we certainly didn't see it as a failure or as something that we were going to give up on, but rather that we were going to keep doing it. And so we have a lot of ideas like this. Unfortunately, a lot of them did get put on hold with the virus and everything. So now the, the, the key is let's, let's don't lose them. So I've written them down. I've written down a lot of my thoughts, and we, we would love to hear from you if you have ideas on, on how to reach out to our neighborhoods and how to reach out to our communities. And I'm hoping that we'll be able to do some uh, get-togethers, either virtually or in person here before long, where we can kind of train each other up and share some of these ways that we can actually be um, effective in what we do so that we have a bit of a, of a plan as we, as we go forth and go forward out into our communities, sharing the good news of Jesus Christ with our, with our, uh, our fellow man, our neighbors. And um, so, I wanted to find this one here. I, I, I had it here a minute ago, and now it looks like I've lost it. That's why I like to write things out, but I don't really have a printer where I can print things off up here right now, so I have to do it on my phone. And my phone kind of has a mind of its own. I don't know if yours is like that. I actually had something lined up here a little while ago regarding this. But, but let me just share today with you what, what, I was, what, what this was about that, that I was even going to share uh, through my, uh, my smartphone, which outsmarted me today. It's all about how we, um, how we communicate the, the gospel, I believe. It's, it's, it, it has to be something we have first. You know, we, an old friend of mine, Gerald, used to tell me years ago, you know, he said, you cannot give away that which you do not have. And it sounds so elemental, so elementary and so basic, and yet it's so true. If we don't have it, we can't give it away. And yet I think a lot of times we, we find ourselves in churches trying to go ahead of God. You know, we, we try to... Um, run ahead of him because we see a problem when I think sometimes God's saying not so fast let's let's get it all together you get your get your priorities straight and that starts out with prayer and we pray about it and you know it looks like prayer is uh, an exercise in 
basically uh, in inactivity, that there's nothing happening. I believe it's just the opposite. I believe prayer is what sets everything in motion. Now, how many of us have ever really intentionally been about praying for our churches, you know, where we just say, look, we know we've got some work to do, but until we get that clear call from God, we're not going to go out and try to do it. And so I believe, first of all, we got to pray. So that's what I was talking about in, in the last couple of weeks. We, we get our marching orders from God. He'll tell us what he wants us to do. Let's get together as individuals and then as our uh, church body, and we pray about it, what we need to do. And then we begin to move forward. We can't stay there forever. You know, God's going to move us forward. You know, the, the, the key now is then, once we get the marching orders from God, how are we going to go ahead and, and, and share our faith? And, and I want to tell you right now, I don't think it's as hard as we make it. And I, I want to share with you a story that I read last night. Now, this one I will be able to find. And this came on the Our Daily Bread app, which, again, I know a lot of you folks do get. And if you don't get it, I would highly suggest that you do get it. It's free, and you'll get a daily devotional about 1230 um, every morning. And so I read this one late last night. I'm just going to kind of read this for you because I think it really fits in with for those of us who feel like, well, we, 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 we aren't um, equipped or we don't have that skill to share our faith with others. I want to I read this to you. At local high school sporting events, Ted was the largest and loudest cheerleader in the stands. Before a degenerative condition took its toll on him, he stood 6 feet 6 inches tall and weighed 290 pounds. Ted's crowd-stirring chants of blue, which was the school's color, and candy tossing at school events were legendary, earning him the name Big Blue. But Ted's reputation in his community wasn't just for cheerleading, neither was it for the alcohol addiction he experienced as a younger man. No, he will be remembered for his love for God and family, for his generosity and kindness. At a four-hour homegoing service that celebrated his life, person after person came forward to testify about the vibrant, Christ-like ways of a man who'd been rescued from darkness by the power of Jesus through the gospel. In Ephesians 5.8, Paul reminded believers that they were once darkness, but quickly noted, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. Such is the call for every believer in, G in Jesus Christ. Children of light, like Ted, have much to offer those engulfed in the world's darkness. I want to read that again, because I think that's the key verse, of the key passage of this whole thing. Listen carefully, please. Children of light, like Ted, have much to offer those engulfed in the world's darkness. So if you think you don't have anything to offer, think again. I believe the world is out there. It's really hurting. I believe there are, is a tremendous emptiness in people's lives. It's been that way since the beginning. God created us with that vacuum in our hearts that only he can fill. So don't think that just because people have their smartphones and their music and their cool cars and they're doing all these things that they are completely fulfilled because obviously they're not. There's a lot of dissatisfaction out in the world today. And again, through this coronavirus, I think a lot of people have come face to face with there's got to be something more here. Well, again, this is what we can learn from people like Ted. Fruitless deeds of darkness are to be avoided. Those in our communities and throughout the world need the brilliant, distinctive witness of those upon whom Jesus has shined. How distinctive? As different as light is from darkness. So that's pretty pretty powerful. You know, I looked up this person. I said, man, I wonder where this person was from, this person named Ted. So I did a little Google search last night. Friends, you're not going to believe this. He was from Kansas City, Kansas. I read all about him. Fascinating person. And he went to the Schlegel High School football games. And the reason I found that to be interesting was that was where my son Jacob played his first game as a senior at Topeka High. They went up and played at Schlegel in 20. 15 September of that year so I'm like I wonder if Ted was at that game you know I know he had had 
some health issues, I believe, that started about 2014. But it really made me wonder if Ted was at that game. Isn't it amazing how our paths cross with people? But, but that just shows you, Ted could have sat there in the stands like this, you know, or, I mean, I've seen people in the stands, they're witnesses, they scream and they say things they probably shouldn't say at the referees or at, at, at even at their own players sometimes. They can be very critical of their own children, which is, you know, not good probably to do that. And then there are others like me that kind of sit here like this. I'm like, I'm just not going to get involved with it. But you know what? If God is calling you, if you have that kind of person, and my wife's watching over here. Hi, Sarah. Glad you got your Facebook going. If my wife, my wife sometimes, she would be the one that would yell. I mean, and she would always do it in appropriate ways. I don't think she had anything inappropriate. But, you know, like I said, I was a lot of time down on the field taking pictures. But when you can have a positive impact and people see you over a period of time, you're going to make a difference. And I think that's how it's going to be. People are going to look at you kind of like, you know, who is this person? So here's, here's what I want to share with you today. One of the things, and that is that if you're self-conscious, you're probably never going to be free to live for Christ. In other words, if, if we're always thinking, oh, gee, what are they going to think of me? Are, are people going to like me or dislike me? we're probably never going to get into that next level where I believe Christ wants us to go. And once we break through that barrier of self-consciousness and we realize that God is going to take us and use us however we can be used, we're, we're going to get to that level that I believe that God wants us to get to. And I was telling... My wife on a walk, I think it was Friday night, we were out walking. And I said, you know, we hear these voices in our minds. And, and, and as we start walking out and we step out in faith for God, and we, we start showing him or we start showing others that light of Christ that comes through Jesus Christ, that, that love of Christ. Many times we're going to hear a voice in our head that's going to tell us that we're not worthy, that we're not good enough that we don't, you know, God, God can't use us. Look at all the things we've done or look at all the things we haven't done. There's sometimes things that were left undone that are every bit as much guilt producing as things that we may have done that we were sorry for. And then if people know about us, if they knew all about us, then they would think, well, this guy can't be used by God. But I'm going to tell you, God can use anybody, anytime, any place. And he's going to take these folks like you and me who may not have the perfect track record, who may not have always been as free to share that love of Christ with others, and he can still do something with us right now. You know, he can, he can do a new thing right now. We're not stuck in our past. Many of us want to feel like we are. I mean, and sometimes we probably, we probably you know, we feel pretty much worthless in a sense. You know, we feel like God can't use us. But again, I say that's the voice of the devil coming through loud and clear. And we have to learn to shut that voice out because Christ has now forgiven us and he's forgotten about those things that we did. And, you know, God has now looked at us as though we have never sinned because we are now clothed in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. It's not just a fancy sounding terminology or a word or, a, or just a nice thought. It is reality. And we have to live in that reality. We've got to start learning that, you know, we've got to see ourselves the way Christ sees us, first of all. We, we keep seeing ourselves the way the devil sees us. We're never going to get off of square one. So we, we've got to move on beyond that. We're not going to save anybody, by the way, ourselves. We will not save anybody. The Holy Spirit's going to do the saving. What are we going to do? We're just a conduit. We're, we're, we're that pipeline that he's going to use. And then we get out of the way and let him do the work. But you know what? He may share uh, what he wants other people to hear through us. So never minimize those times that you have with other people. It may be, be a very small word that you share with somebody. You know, as I've said before, it may be like you just planted a little seed and then you moved on and then Someone else later comes along and, and, and puts a little water on that seed. Somebody else adds a little fertilizer. Somebody else puts some more water on. Pretty soon that seed grows into something and it's ready to be harvested and that person meets the Lord. Well, it all started when you planted.
planted that little bitty seed that you never even knew about. You know, I wonder uh, when we all get to heaven, if there's going to be times where God's going to say, you know, that person you talked to that you've totally forgotten about, that you didn't even remember 24 hours later, what you said had an impact on that person, and that person later found faith with me. So we just never know. We can't ever try to guess how God's going to use us. You know, going back to Ted here in the story that I read about him, uh, beyond this, when I was looking up some uh, details about Ted, and I found his story basically on an obituary that was, I think it was printed in 2019. So Ted's, I think, been gone now for about two years almost. And uh, man, the, 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 an amazing life, an amazing story. But one of the things he did once he met the Lord, totally changed his life. And you talk about a 180. Ted's life completely changed to the point where he, where he continually was out serving the Lord and he was witnessing on the street corners. He was passing out tracts, leading people to go to his church. And one of the things people would say to him was that how could God forgive them? How could they possibly come to church with all the bad things they had done? And, and, I, and they quoted Ted as saying, well, when you, go to the, when you go to the cleaners, are your clothes clean or dirty? You know, so you so so you just come as you are, and God will take you as you are. He'll take me as I am, and we can't always go back and undo things that we wish we could have undone. That's not going to be possible. What can we do then? Well, like we said last week, we develop the mind of Christ, where we put the past behind us, we let the go. We can't do anything about what's what's history. You know, again, my wife and I out walking there, and we we have these talks, and she she probably. I thought, gee, man, there went my sermon. I said at one time I should have just left it there. That one of the things I was saying was how when we, uh, when God is speaking to us, we share that with others, and, and we can't be limited by those things that that maybe others would want to limit us on. So don't don't ever be afraid to share what Christ has given you to share with somebody else. Again, it may just be that short word in passing. One of the things that's important, and we're going to talk about this about uh, 15, 20 minutes from now in our sermon, is when we realize that we can be all things to all people, how does that happen? Well, most of us would just as soon just sort of live in our own little shell. If you're like me, you'd probably like to just sort of be, you know, where you're not being bothered by anybody, you're not bothering them, you know, I'm okay, you're okay, live and let live. Everybody's fine, but when we realize that God's called us beyond ourselves, then we start relating to individuals out there on an individual basis so that our attention is on that one person. We make eye contact with them. Now, one of my problems, I'll tell people, and I, and I, I mean, it's, it's nothing against anybody, I've always seemed like I've had a problem making eye contact with people to some degree. And uh, I don't know what that is. If I'm far enough away from it, it's not a huge problem. A lot of times I can kind of look at it. But, but, um, and there have been times where I've made eye contact with people for a long time. Don't get me wrong. I mean, you know, it's not something I can't do. It's just something that I've not always done regularly or consistently maybe or felt like that was something that was just something that came easily to me. But, when we talk to people and we want to show them the love of Christ, we really have to zero in on them, don't we? And we, we can't just treat them as a number or just somebody we're just trying to uh, kind of get out of our way and, you know, hey, how you doing? You know, but, but if we really want to reach people, we've got to invest in them. We've got to uh, show them uh, the love of Christ. We've got to do that by showing them how important they are. So we'll, we'll talk about that here in a few minutes on how to be all things to all people. Not an easy thing to do because for all of us, it takes us out of our comfort zone. We would, again, rather just sort of hunker down. And I, mean, I used to tell people, man, a good day for me is when the phone doesn't ring. You know, I don't have to answer to anybody or anything. And those days are few and far between. But, to, but that's just reality. I mean, I think we all need a break too occasionally. But, but again, as we look forward to what God's got in, in store for these churches, even though right now we're, we're still in a bit of a holding pattern with COVID, we're moving forward. We've got plans that, that are being developed even now. And again, the biggest thing for me is to pray, 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 pray. It's, a, it's something that doesn't come natural because we want to see results. 
And again, the results may not even come in our lifetime. The results may come way down the road. All we have to do is be um, obedient to what God's telling us to do be res and be responsive to what he tells us to do. He'll take care of the rest. We don't have to be concerned about the results. All we got to do is be obedient and be available. Let him do the rest. He'll take care of all the all of the results, you know, that's not for us to be concerned about. We don't need another notch in our belt that, oh, we saved another person because we haven't saved anybody. It's the Holy Spirit that's going to save them. So anyway, just some thoughts today as we try to um, figure out through this whole COVID situation, it's, it's been um, a challenge. You know, I don't get on Facebook much and um, in terms of personal stuff. I mean, I'll go on to our Reverend Phil Anderson one here and post things on there quite often which is what you're looking at here right now. But um, no, we, uh, we can use social media. We can use a lot of things. Just be ready that there's going to be opposition. You know, don't think everybody's going to love you once you start sharing the love of Christ. But you know what? We don't get our feel goods from the people around us. We don't do things to please them. If we did that, we would never get off square one. Um, there'd be plenty of people in the bars that will be glad to be your best friend. Uh, plenty of people out doing drugs, plenty, plenty of people doing crime, people doing all kinds of things. They'd be your best friend if you let them. Uh, and if you need, if you don't stand up for what it is that you believe, and you do it in, in a loving way, God's going to reach you. Again, that's been the, one of the big challenges: is how do you do that? It's, a, it's sometimes a long process. It's like a little drop of rain coming on a rock, and you go, "That's never going to erode it." And then eventually, years later, you see where that little bit of rain, a little water, made a difference there. So. Uh, Anyway, um, we'll 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 keep working on this together. I'm with you. If you're if that's something you're a little uncomfortable doing or it's a little hard, we do it together. But you know, eventually God's going to call you to do something. And he's going to call me to do something. And when He does, we just got to follow through. We can't wait on somebody else. We if He tells us what to do. We got to do it. So I want to before we go today, I want to um, say a prayer. We got people right now in our congregations who are battling illnesses. I know the coronavirus has raised its head again in our midst, in our congregations. And so I want to pray for those that are suffering from that. And, um, and just in general, that we just keep our heads up, you know, keep encouraged through these difficult days, which is why I'm talking to you on this little camera phone right now in front of me. Normally I'd be downstairs right now. We'd be finishing up our service here at Oakland. But you know what? We're making the best of it. God's never told us it's going to be easy. And he just said, hang in there and trust him one day at a time. There's a uh, verse. I don't have it in front of me. I believe it's in Isaiah chapter, might be chapter 10. And remember this year I was talking about how I really felt like this year that I just reached out and grabbed God's hand. I felt that he was already grabbing on to me. I, you know, you may not realize that God's got a hold of you until you reach out and grab his hand, but he's already grabbing a hold of you. But there's actually a verse in the Bible that speaks about that. And it was just amazing to find that verse because that was the real image that came to me. And I'm sure you all can relate to that to some degree, that um, God has not left us. He has not abandoned us. He has not um, deserted us. But he has stayed right with us through all of the things that we've gone through. And he's going to get us to wherever it is he wants us to go. And we have great confidence and assurance with that. So let's pray. Lord, I do thank you for this time where we can just share a little bit about what it means to love you and how to share that love with others. Lord, help us to let the Holy Spirit talk through us to others. Lord, we don't have to be upset or uncomfortable or anxious. But Lord, you do you do the work. Help us just to be your your tool that you use. Help us to be your vehicle, your conduit, your your pipeline to others, Lord, that we can be used by you, Lord. I pray, Father, for the people in our midst, in our churches in particular right now, who are dealing with illnesses. Uh, I've got several people I'm aware of right now that are struggling with illness, and certainly, Lord, we've got coronavirus now in the midst of our congregations. Lord, I pray that you would provide healing for the individuals right now who are dealing with health issues, who are, who are ill, Lord, and especially those right now with the coronavirus. You get them through this time, bring them back to health. Lord, we just thank you for being a good God, a loving God, forgiving God. Lord, we, we, just, we have so much to, to thank you uh, for, Lord, and uh, we just give you the rest of this day. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, 1017. 
Mark, good to see you here. Mark's in from Colorado, my brother. Welcome. I'll read your comment in a minute, Mark. So I'm going to I'm gonna close this down. I'll be back with you in about 12 minutes, and we'll do our service. And then at 11.15, we'll do our, uh, our scripture memory. So we're doing that now in the morning just to keep everything a little more consolidated. I hope that works. And again, uh, we'll be seeing you here in about 15 minutes. Thanks again for being with me. God bless you.